So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on what we've already talked about. We've gone through it a couple of times at least. Uh, so we're going to fly through this. I'm not going to read all of the um, all of the Bible verses, and I'm going to close the door. And you're going outside. Oh, yep. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, I, I haven't put this up before. Uh, well, I have before, but uh, during this lecture. So, um, it, the Bible tells us that John was um, John was baptizing uh, across the Jordan near Bethany, um, and so the. I, we don't know the exact area, but that is probably uh, pretty close. And on the other side of the um, of the Jordan River from Jerusalem, it certainly it was across somewhere across from uh, Judea in the southern part of uh, of Israel. So um, we're gonna, but then from here we're gonna. I'm not gonna read all of this again. We read it a couple of times. Um, and then um, I'm, I am going to talk a little bit about the questions that um, that the leaders from um, from Jerusalem uh, po poised to um, to John. So the first question was, "Who are you?" Um, and John's answer um, uh, John's answer uh, was. Um, um, he confessed and, and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. So he, ladies, uh, so, um, so he, he said, I'm not the Christ. I'm not the Messiah. Um, I don't know if he knew at this time who the Messiah was, uh, probably because uh, it happened at Jesus' baptism, and that was highly likely already, um, already happened. Uh, so he said, I'm not the Christ. They wondered, and, and I don't think they thought he was the Christ. I think they thought that he thought he was the Christ. Does that make sense? Uh, I don't know that for sure, but uh, that's that's my take on it. And then they asked, are you Elijah? Remember, there was this theology that Elijah would come back. Now, the curriculum says that that's Messiah. I, I believe that, that it says that it, Elijah will come back at the end of time, and I believe Elijah will come back. At the end of time, I could be wrong. And anything that I'm wrong on, you're you're very um, uh, ha I'm very happy for you to trash talk me after it's all over with, <laughs> and you can say, "Hey, you got it wrong." Um, but are you El Elijah? And he said, "I am not Elijah." Right? And then they said, "Were well, you that prophet?" And that prophet, I believe, was Messiah. Um, and and Messiah and uh, it talked the the way it talks about um, in the Old Testament. Sounds like what Jesus came to do. So, so are you that prophet? And again, he said he wasn't right, and he said no. Um, so then, who are you? What do you say for yourself? Um, and uh, so they said, who are you? And and John said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. John's role in all of this was prophesied as well in in the book of Isaiah, um, and he and he he quotes it verbatim that his his job in all of this is to to make the way straight for the Lord to make Messiah known, um, which is exactly what he did. Uh, and then so then why do you baptize people if you're not Elijah, if you're not the prophet, then, then, and you're just a voice, why are you baptizing? And he says, uh, they asked him then, why are you baptizing if you're neither the Christ nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered him, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. I think that we don't really understand how crazy that that um, what what John or to me um, what um, John is saying to them 
Because in ancient times, in ancient ancient Israel, the only person that could take off the sandals or take off the shoes of another person was a slave. And in fact, it was it was deemed so demeaning that only a Gentile slave could take off the shoes of someone. Jewish slave, it was above Jewish slave. So, uh, so what he's saying is, I'm just a slave. I'm nothing. He is. And, and that's why he says, I must become, you know, he must become greater and I must become. So, um, so that's, that's what he said for himself. And I think that probably shocked the Jewish leadership because they knew that he was putting himself down, uh, quite literally. Uh, so then we talked about um, the spiritual leaders and where they were uh, spiritually. Um, and they were in spiritual ignorance. They didn't understand. Uh, they, were, they were the leaders of Israel, right? They were the ones, they were the teachers of Israel. And they didn't understand the scriptures. Um, and, and so uh, because of that, because they misinterpreted or because they misunderstood that part, um, and, and they missed that idea because, as I told you, John's part on this was, um, was prophesied. And they knew the prophecy. They knew most, uh, and especially the leaders, but most adult males in, at this time had the entire, what we call the Old Testament, had the whole thing memorized. Our minds have an incredible facility to memorize. The thing is that we don't use that because we just like, oh, look it up and we, we don't need to memorize it. But at that time, you didn't have your own Bible, right? We have, oh, I can look that up. I can look at Gordon's. I can. They didn't have uh, the scrolls were for in the in the synagogue and. And in, in the temple, they didn't have books. And carrying around a bunch of scrolls, you know, where are we going to put that in our little house, right? And where, how am I going to get it to the synagogue? So, um, so they memorized it. The whole Old Testament. Most, man, most adult males knew it. Um, and so he knew the scripture. Uh, and the Jewish leaders knew the scripture. But they missed that, G, that John was the forerunner of Christ, which means they missed that Jesus was the Messiah. Um, they didn't recognize him for that, but a lot of people didn't. Um, and then they were, um, sorry. Uh, and then they were, um, in, they had spiritual pride. They were... Um, in, the, in their condition, they were very prideful. They were the most holy people in um, in Israel, according to themselves. Uh, but Jesus' harshest words were to these men. So the Jewish leaders thought that John was uh, an interloper. An interloper is basically a thief, someone who comes in and takes something without um, without um, cause well, not maybe not cause, but with a, without a right to do that. And so what they're basically saying is, you're not one of us. And we talked about yesterday. What was who was his father? What did his father do? He was a priest. So he could have been a priest. He should have been a priest, according to the people around him. But that wasn't the job that God had for him. God had a much more important job for him. So John stands his ground. Uh, he doesn't deny. He says, I am not. Uh, and then uh, spiritual confusion. I think this is basically where we uh, left off. Uh, so the Jews uh, then asked John if he was Elijah uh, and that or, or that prophet. Uh, now, the curriculum believes that both Elijah and the prophet are, are um, Messiah. And that could be right. I think that um, Elijah uh, will come back one day. Um, and that the prophet, that prophet, 
is the Messiah. Uh, so uh, uh, they were uh, in spiritual uh, confusion. Behold, I will send you uh, Elijah, the prophet, before the great and awesome day of the Lord. So, so just before um, Jesus comes back, basically, is what that is. And he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. So he's saying, I'm not um, that person. And, and, um, and it, they should have realized that as well. So they were in spiritual uh, confusion. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's where it was. Yeah, so um, so the, the prophet is talked about in um, in De Deuteronomy, and, and this is that um, that um, passage. Uh, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him that you shall listen. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among your their brothers. And I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. Uh, so um, uh, that was um, about the the um, uh, the prophet that was to go to come, which I believe is Messiah. Um, but they they were in spiritual uh, confusion, um, and uh, First Corinthians talks about people. Like that in uh, in First Corinthians two, the natural person. So the natural person is a person who does not know Christ. So the natural person is a is an unbeliever. So the unbeliever does not accept the things of uh, of the Spirit of God, for they are folly, they are foolishness to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. So the person that doesn't know Christ can't understand spiritual things. It's kind of like me and math. I don't do math. I stink at math. I stink at math so, math so badly that if I'm trying to add seven and six, I have to think about it. Actually, I've said that so many times, I know it's 13. But if I hadn't said it so many times, I would have been doing some of this, right? I stink at math. Um, and I'm very, obviously, I'm very open about that. And one of the reasons I'm open about that is because I want you to understand that you can stink at math and be incredibly intelligent. I'm not saying I'm incredibly intelligent, but I am intelligent. Uh, and I speak at math. So if that's to you, I hope that uh, that helps you. Um, but, uh, but what it's saying here is that we can only discern truth if we know the truth. Right? If we don't know the truth and if we don't study the truth, we can't know the truth. Just like you can't know math unless you work it. Right? And so if we're going to um, spend all our time on TikTok or whatever else it is y'all do these days, uh, and not in God's word, we won't, we won't know it. We won't know what is true. We won't know what is false. And, and whatever is on TikTok or all of that social media thing, I mean, I still have Facebook. I'm not that, that far behind um, and um, then, then we're not going to know the truth. We're not going to know God's word. Um, and, and that's the only way we can. The only way that we can um, be spiritually discerned is if we know truth. Um, otherwise, we, we can't. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about the humility of John. John didn't make any great claim on himself. He didn't say, hey, I'm the son of a, um, of a priest. I'm, I was born to be a priest. <laughs> um, 
he had, what he called himself was just a voice, right? But Jesus called him the greatest among men. And, and John was sent by God for a purpose that he, um, he, he committed himself. His birth was announced by an, by an angel. That doesn't happen very often, right? In the Bible, in the New Testament, Jesus and John, that, that's it. Um, but uh, when, when he was asked who he was, he just said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make way the straight of the Lord. Uh, make straight the way of the Lord. Because he put the spotlight on Jesus. That we would all do that. Not put the spotlight on us, but put the spotlight on Jesus. And when he sees it in verse 29, he says, Behold the Lamb of God. So now we're going to put uh, Christ in the, uh, in the spotlight. So John diminished himself, but he also uh, exalted Christ. John answered them, the Jewish leaders, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know. Even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. Um, okay, so there are a couple other things I'm going to talk about, um, but um, this is the, the last slide, but we're not uh, through what I want to talk about. So we'll just leave that up there. So um, uh, it says a number of things about a voice. I'm not interested um, in that. Um, John exalted Christ. Unlike the Jewish leaders, John didn't exalt himself. He exalted Christ. Uh, and we see this um, in... Uh, we see this in verses 25 through 27. Um, and we just uh, we just read that passage, um, and, and it, when it says uh, one standing among you, that is uh, meaning Jesus, uh, that may mean one from a, a same country or same area. That he's one of us, um, that Jesus. Um, and I already talked about him, uh, you know, not being. Um, not being um, able to uh, to um, take Jesus's, not worthy to take off Jesus's sandals, um, but um, uh, we so we're going to go kind of backwards here um, and talk about uh, Jesus's uh, baptism uh, because that happened before all of this. John had already uh, baptized Jesus. Um, and, and, and we know that because he said to the leaders, that the one that I baptized, right? So, and, and, and God told me that um, the, the person I baptized, that I see the, the Holy Spirit come down, descend, and, uh, and stay on him, that's the Messiah. So that's how John knew that Jesus was the Messiah. Uh, because he had baptized him. Uh, and uh, I don't know how long before uh, these events that happened, but probably not very long. Uh, and so that's how he knew that Jesus was the Messiah, because God told him, uh, quite literally. Uh, and, and, and I think it, he probably would have been surprised that it was his cousin. Right, because they grew up together in some fashion. Uh, certainly, when um, when they went to Jerusalem, uh, which you had to go to Jerusalem for the major feasts, they probably see, saw each other and, and helped, hung out together. Um, but uh, I, I'm sure he was surprised when he found it was was Jesus. Uh, so um, it talks about the next day. It, or another day uh, close by, not, not sure if it was the exact next day. Um, he says, behold, the Lamb of God. Uh, and um, I think that we've heard that so much, it's kind of hard uh, for us to um, take it all in. 
Here's the thing. You are, uh, I assume, at least most of you, are in Christian homes, have parents that are followers of Christ. You're at a Christian school, some of you, Grace, Ben, have been here, Josiah, um, since Taylor. You've been surrounded by believers. Your teachers are believers. You've been taught Bible for all these years, whether it's your first year here or your, I don't even know how many years that would be, 10 years, 10, 11 years? 11 years with kindergarten. Yeah, that was a long time. Um, and I was your Bible teacher, too, and we did verses every day, didn't we? And we did actions to those verses, and I don't know if you remember that, but I do. I still do that at camp. Um, and by the way, did we ever do um, do not depend on your own understanding? You were our P. Yeah, I know. But did I do that? That We always started with the verse. I don't remember. I don't remember. Well, I'll, I'll talk about that later because I'm not going to do it on, on YouTube. But, um, yeah. but um, you, you, you know so much about the Bible, about Christ. It can, but that, the problem with that, or the possible problem with that, is that you can become jaded. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know this. Yeah. Or we can not um, take that in. And the thing is, is that when we see Jesus, there is only everywhere in Scripture, when people see Jesus glorified, they have the same uh, reaction. They fall face down. And when we get to heaven... I think people think when we get to heaven, we're going to have a chance to say, okay, yeah, I know I did that, and I shouldn't have done that, but here's why I did it, and here's why I'm... No. We are going to fall face first in uh, worship. And and not necessarily. Some some will bow even though they don't want it. Um, and so my question for you is this. Are you in awe of Jesus? Or does he bore you? Are you indifferent? Because truly, the only way to be in heaven and the only way to walk with Christ is for him to be our Lord, our Master. When we don't do it perfectly, nobody does. Your Bible teacher definitely doesn't do it perfectly. But my desire is to do it. And it's why I take this, this job, this calling to teach te teenagers the Bible so serious. I told you this the first day of school, but I'm going to tell you again. In about two and a half years, I think, I really said But um, you're going, it's going to go faster than you know. You're going to don a cap and a gown, and you're going to walk across across the stage, and I will be crying somewhere in one of the first few of us. Um, and on that day, if you are not passionately in love with Jesus, I've failed you. I've had people say to me, no, 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 it's not up to you. You can't feel that way. And I tell them, I don't know if it's actually true. But that's what I feel, and that's how much it, how, um, how much I desire for all of my students to be walking with Jesus, because He is the only way. Um, so the Pharisees um, were looking for a prophet, for Elijah, something flashy. Not this upstart Galilean who's saying that he's the, the, um, the Messiah. They didn't want a Savior who would save them from hell. They wanted a Savior who would save them from the Romans. 
they thought, the Jewish leadership thought, that Messiah would get rid of the Romans. But that wasn't why he came, and that wasn't Messiah. Um, and, um, uh, and, and he said, behold, John said, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He didn't <coughs> say, behold the Lamb of God who slays the Romans. What kind of lamb would that be? But the Pharisees were too blind um, to their own need. And we can be that way too. We can think, yeah, I'm fine. And Jesus is just waiting for you to take him at his word and follow him. You won't do it perfectly. Nobody does. Not even Mrs. Shrug. Although she's not as close as me. And uh, but um, but it, that's the only way. There is only one way. People say, well, that's a little exclusive. Why didn't he make more ways? He didn't have to make a way at all. He could have left us to our own devices. That he made a way at all is grace. And we should be grateful. So we'll stop here. Um, and uh, we don't have time to do the is, but we'll do that first thing tomorrow.